Hey guys, uh, welcome to my channel. This is Rai Rai Magai. Uh, you can call me Ryan. If you watched my previous floss tube, uh, I, I mentioned that I would be doing a standalone video for what uh, how I prepared or, or packed um, for the retreat uh, that was here in Canada last weekend called Stitch North. It was an amazing retreat put on by Caroline McNeil of uh, Off the Grid Needle Arts and Evertote. Um, got to meet her wonderful team, got to meet some wonderful, amazing stitchers, and uh, yeah, it was it was really such such a wonderful experience for my first uh, retreat. I, I really look forward to the next one. It, it, it's going to be amazing. In in prepping for that retreat, I uh, like I said, I'd never been on a stitching retreat before, and and I didn't know what to. Pack. I didn't know what to bring. I, I googled. I, I looked for some floss tubes specifically about that and I, I did find one or two random things here and there but nothing really concise or as thorough as what I was looking for. Uh, I know I tend to be or at least I give the impression that I'm somewhat organized and that's not always the case but I really wanted to be prepared for this um, so um, yeah, I thought I would take the time to make a little video and talk about my experience on preparing and packing for the trip. I, I was going to do it actually before the trip, but now I, I didn't have time. And now that it's after, uh, it actually worked out well because then I can talk about kind of what worked and what didn't and, uh, and stuff like that. Sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy the journey through my little tote bag. Uh, as as I showed you earlier, um, so I, I, I made a tote bag to contain, I wanted a tote bag uh, that would contain all of my non-project specific stitching essentials and uh, and this is what I came up with and um, it's it's a fairly basic construction it's got that box bottom it was inspired by a knitting bag I have but I wanted something um, a little shorter and uh, uh, by wild by wild coincidence uh, included in the stitch north a gift bag or loop bag or welcome bag. Caroline, uh, of course, her, her business is making project bags, among other things, and uh, she included a project bag in the welcome kit, and this is the tote bag I made. That's the project bag. Can you believe it? It's, it's literally, actually, exactly the same print. I mean, you you can't get any crazier than that. Uh, that, that. I mean, that just blew me away. What a what a coincidence. So, yeah, I guess Caroline and I are on the same wavelength, and and that's a good thing. So, I thought maybe what I will do for this video. Uh, this is going to be a first for me, so you'll have to you'll have to bear with me and have patience. But uh, so what I'd like to do is take you through the contents of my um, little tote bag here and discuss the logic behind why I packed things and why I didn't pack certain things and um, and just to talk about the bag in general. Uh, I think for this video I want to try something new and I'll try to film from the top down and that way you kind of I can lay every, I can unpack it and lay everything out for you and uh, rather than having me you know just hold up random things um, so I can lay everything out and uh, it might just make for a better viewing experience so thank you for your patience and understanding in this new kind of perspective for me and let's take it away I, this is my my newest uh, construction method for installing a zipper. I like the the wrap around. Um, there's no wonky corners here. It's an, it's nice and square, and it's got this little fishtail here at the end. So when you when you unzip it, uh, you can open it right up, and um, and that that's what I liked about this. It's also got a white lining, so it's really easy to see everything inside of it. Uh, what what originally prompted me to want to make a little tote bag is I uh, I got um, a power bank 
uh, a sort of a, a portable battery pack and uh, it was a little bit awkward so I, I just wanted something to carry it around with me. Uh, this is a solar, um, you can recharge it using solar energy, solar power, or you can uh, plug it in as well right uh, into an, an outlet and you can connect uh, two USB um, cables to it so you can share this power bank uh, with your fellow stitcher if uh, you need uh, to plug in a light. I'll just arrange everything around here and maybe at the end of the video I'll just kind of sort of remove what it is that I didn't use or that I didn't need to pack. Uh, so for the power bank and for my light uh, I needed a cable. So I, I really like these mesh bags because they, I'll just move this over here. I really like these mesh bags because it lets you, it keeps things organized, but lets you see what's inside. So inside here, I've got my little uh, wall, wall adapter. So I can plug my USB um, device right into the wall. And then I've got my cable. But be sure you pack the right cables. I did forget to bring the one that connects this into the wall. <laughs> um, so I had to rely on solar energy, which which was awesome. Um, but uh, this allows me to connect my lamp to the power bank. So uh, this, this really came in handy as well. Um, for those of you that were wondering about the lighting situation, there weren't there weren't plugs at every table. In fact, there, there weren't plugs at any table. And while the lighting was okay, it was comfortable, I, I think uh, many of us preferred a, a much stronger light. And, um, and of course, you need to plug your light into something. So, you know, I'll bring it out right now. Uh, this, this was the light I brought. And um, yeah, I just bought it off Amazon. It's a clip light. It actually is a rechargeable light. So, uh, when I have it plugged into the power bank, it's actually recharging, uh, but I don't need to have it plugged into a power source. Uh, so the, the charge lasts um, a good while. Uh, what I like about this too is that the head can split, so you can really expand uh, your light source or you can clip it together. Uh, it's strong enough that it can stand on its own uh, if, you, if you need to be. It also it also clips, and it's a pretty strong, sturdy clip. So uh, I, I really had no complaints with this light, and uh, it's got three light settings. Um, yeah, yeah, I I I was very happy with this. It it, it served its function perfectly, and uh, I I did have to plug it into the power bank at one time. I mean, you're really stitching all day, so. So yeah, you're <laughs> um, it, it's going to certainly blow through any energy that uh, was in its reserve. So yeah, so that this is the light I brought. Okay, so back into the bag. Uh, th this I, I kind of brought almost as a joke. Uh, I, I did some YouTube searches for what to bring to a retreat and someone suggested bringing, oh, actually it was in the Facebook group. Someone suggested bringing a pair of tongs so you can help yourself <laughs> to your snacks uh, without, uh, without dirtying your hands. It helps keep your fingers clean. And I'll be honest with you, uh, this, this I did not use. <laughs> I, I did not use one bit. Um, Hand cream. Um, I, I like these little travel sizes, and uh, some people like to, to moisturize before they start stitching. It helps prevent or, or cut down or minimize snags. Uh, my my cuticles are not the best, as you can see. I don't look too closely. <laughs> so a um, little hand cream comes in handy. And uh, I, I mentioned in my in my Stitch North video, there's a lot of snacking going on. And um, yeah, it's just uh, nice to have a little uh, refresher for the breath. And I, I made a pocket inside my pouch and in the pocket, I have, uh, oh, oh wow. 
<laughs> I, I was looking for this. Uh, there was um, a Rocky Mountain needle minder um, company there, a vendor, and I picked up uh, a little um, counter and a uh, little pin. And I thought I lost it. <laughs> I thought I lost it. So, you know, it's one of those things where you say, I'm going to put it in a safe place. And of course, you can never remember where that safe place is. So <laughs> I'm glad I found that. So in my little needle book, uh, this I made also with uh, with uh, companion fabric to that. And um, I actually picked this up with uh, through at Dollarama. It's a, it's just a hairband and it was a nice stretchy um, elastic on the smaller side and this really uh, fit the bill. Put that aside. And what's inside here? Uh, this is my this is my go-to tin. This I take with me even throughout the house when I'm stitching. It's got really a lot of the essentials that I need, and uh, it's just an old um, mini cigar tin from from Cuba. And uh, I I don't smoke. Um, I, I don't enjoy cigars that much. Uh, like no judgment, but I I actually bought this just for the tin. My magnets here. Uh, magnets are are my best friend. <laughs> I, I use these for everything. Um, I can turn anything really into a into a needle minder. I can um, uh, I use it to anchor my fabric if I'm using a Q snap or an embroidery um, hoop. Uh, so yeah, I, I always have magnets handy. Uh, little post-it flags or bookmark flags. Uh, these are these are from Muji. Uh, they they really do some wonderful stationary um, items, and uh, yeah, I think that these are sold more as a bookmark flag. But you can uh, make little notes on them, and uh, yeah, I mean I'm I'm never. I, I always have these close at hand, no matter where I am. And I, what I liked about this is they were they were nice at low, very low profile, uh, different colors, very portable. So yeah, I, I always have these on hand. Uh, chocolates. <laughs> the, this was my emergency stash of chocolates for the retreat, and as you can see, they're they're still here in the tin. I did not need these. Um, there was a mountain of snacks in the in the center of of every table. People brought so much, and uh, and yeah, <laughs> uh, there was definitely no shortage of snacks. Um, but this was my secret little pro tip here, actually. Um, <clears throat> this is pink peppercorn, and uh, this one is uh, red berries and flaxseed. So <laughs> my my pro tip, if if you don't bring enough to share, uh, bring some really weird, bizarre flavor so no one else is uh, going to want it anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's my little uh, energy treats there. Um, this is uh, Fiskar's uh, scissor, a scissor sharpener. It's just got a ceramic rod here, and you uh, drag your blades through. Uh, this... Honestly, I didn't need at the retreat. I mean, you're you're cutting thread. Like, how 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 fast are your scissors gonna dull? Um, but like I said, I I keep this with me in the house, so I I just keep everything together in this tin. Um, affordable, handy, and uh, thank you, Ymir of uh, Almond M Ms. Uh, this was one of her um, must-have tools, and it's now part of my kit as well. A tape measure in uh, Imperial and Metric. Um, always, always handy to have. I'm, I'm never far without these. This is a little backup and needle minder that I had. Uh, this is actually one of the first ones I made. I, I, it was a pin. It was a little batch. I just uh, took the pin off and turned it into a needle minder. Uh, so that was fun. Uh, my emergency stash of needles. Uh, I've been using uh, Saju needles. It's a shop in in France. They've been around for uh, for decades and decades. I'm, I'm more than a century. Uh, don't don't quote me on that, but a very long time. Uh, this was a size uh, 28. I've I've got another pack somewhere else with uh, assorted sizes. Uh, so yeah, I I, I really like uh, these needles, and um, I always have some spares close at hand. A small pen, 
a must-have. Again, um, came in handy a lot, especially at the retreat. We've got people exchanging and sharing information and... Uh, I mean, yeah, sure. We've got a uh, we've got smartphones that uh, that can take care of all of that for us. But this is handy, maybe for <laughs> writing on your post-it note, so yeah, or, or taking a note on your chart. So always have that as well. And as a snag nabbit, this um, this is new for me. Um, I know I know Ellen has one, and so of course I had to have one. I've got felting needles, but uh, that that do the same job. But <clears throat> I thought it was time to have a snag nab. It came in a little sleeve, so I just threw it in here. I did not need this or use this on the retreat, uh, but but it's uh, it's good to have in your little kit. Uh, tweezers. This is a set of um, petite tweez from a Tweezer Man, and uh, if you have pets. <laughs> You know what to use this for. I uh, constantly I'm picking hairs and fur out of uh, out of my stitching. I, I'm telling you, there's going to be a cat DNA in everything I stitch here. <laughs> so so I always have these at hand for sure. And this actually was a little um, travel case at one time, not like a little portable sewing case, and I just sort of um, modified it or or just swapped out some stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. I swapped out some stuff uh, for some things that I that I, that I would use more frequently. I brought a couple of paper clips. Uh, these are useful for holding um, pages of your of your chart open, um, or to mark your place in a book if you're reading. Um, needle threader. Uh, there, there's actually two in here. Um, this this is you know the, the ubiquitous needle minder or sorry the the new ubiquitous threader and I had a small well I have a smaller one as well and uh, this one I'm sure you're familiar with too this is uh, uh, this I use for for threading um smaller much smaller beading needles and uh, I, I find with this particular kind I need to be careful because this wire is so fragile and uh, if you're trying to pull um, a thicker uh, strand of floss or thread through a small eye, uh, I, I've ripped out many of these wires. So um, yeah, it's always good to have backups and this I reserve exclusively for, uh, for beading. Uh, little snips. This, the, these are airplane, sorry, airplane friendly. I, I drove there, so I didn't need to worry about what I had to check in. So, um, these, again, they stay in the kit. Uh, they're handy to have, obviously. Uh, you can't get that close. They're rounded tips, uh, again, because I think they're airplane safe, airline safe. So, um, Again, they always stay in here. And as an alternate uh, for the scissors, this was actually a hack. Uh, I apologize, I can't remember who um, or where I picked this tip up from. But this is actually ripped from, uh, from a container of dental floss. And uh, this allows you, I think this is more suitable for, for cutting thread or, or strands as you pull it off a skein, but you definitely um, wouldn't find this useful for, for trimming a length of thread after you finish uh, stitching with it. Um, but again, very, very airline safe, so that's cute. And then there's a little uh, stash of sewing needles in, you know, protective plastic tube. Uh, I like this because, you know, when you've got a needle or two, if you don't have a safe place to store it, then it gets lost or you risk getting poked. So I, I like this little cylinder. Uh, so that's what was inside here. Where am I going to put it? Uh, that was my tin. And uh, on the other side, oh, you know, in the middle, this is uh, where I park my uh, threads that I'm using. You know, this way I don't need to re-thread a, a needle whenever I switch colors. And uh, on the felt, it's a great place to sort of toss your sort of little ort storage, your your random strands of thread. <clears throat> the back, uh, there's another little pocket, and uh, this is where I keep my scissors. Um, 
these are these are my go-to scissors right now. I, I do love a, a nice pair of scissors, and I've really been enjoying these. The um, they're Kelm Scott designs, and what I love about these, and actually, I mean, I I don't think you can see, uh, but uh, one of the blades is serrated, and uh, this I've never actually used a pair of scissors like this. One side is serrated, the other side is smooth. Uh, obviously, I, I don't think I want to drag the serrated blade through through the sharpener, but um, the serrations I think help kind of catch the thread, so when you're slipping it, it doesn't push or slide, and the the tip is uh, is really nice and sharp, so it's good at getting right in there. So yeah, I, I love these. I, 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 I've been using them um, steadily ever since I acquired them. And uh, what else is in here? Oh, this, this <laughs> is uh, sort of my little portable place to park my needles. <laughs> Oops, excuse the mess here. Um, yeah, this was a, a piece of cruel work that I had done many, many years ago, and I somehow managed to scorch the linen. So, <clears throat> as you can see, I, I don't know if you can tell, but uh, I, I tried um, a variety of methods to get rid of it, and uh, I ended up with OxyClean, and uh, it kind of leached out some of the color from this, from this border thread and uh, you can see it kind of weeped into the linen so I didn't want to frame it but I also didn't want to get rid of it and uh, so I just kind of lined it with the with the back of the matching fabric and um, made a little loop and uh, the, this actually <clears throat> the colors even go I, I just kind of noticed that but uh, I just kind of park it in here uh, with the rest of my supplies in here as I'm stitching and uh, yeah I, I, I thought that it was uh, it was cute so it's my little um, portable pin cushion. And uh, I think that was everything that was everything in here. Maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll just kind of review what I used and, and what I didn't, uh, what I didn't need. Um, this, this I, I didn't need plenty of treats. Um, this, uh, well, it's good to have a needle minder. This I, I didn't use, I, I bought it there so that can go. Uh, this I, I wasn't flying, so I didn't need to worry about that. I, I, I could lift that out. Um, this was redundant. I've already got a pair of scissors, so I, I, I didn't need that. Um, measuring tape, I'll, I'll never be without the sharpener. Again, it, it was just a weekend. It wasn't something that I needed. Um, although, I mean, it would be nice if people do have dull scissors. You, you can pass it around because I, I don't think everyone uh, has uh, anything like this. So, so yeah, you know, I think uh, to be a, a friendly um, stitching companion, I, I would keep that available. Um, these paper clips, they're cute. I didn't use. Uh, Snag Mammoth. Uh, fortunately, I didn't need it, but I could see I, I might likely need it. Magnets, definitely. Tongs, tongs, nope. Um, this for sure. Pen for sure. For sure. Yeah, so uh, all of this, um, all of this I, I actually uh, did use. I mean, except for that, but, uh, but I would definitely keep that handy. I mean, really, this takes up no space at all. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll clear this up and then I'll show you some other accessories that I brought. If you watched my Stitch North video, uh, you might recall I did the finishing for the exclusive Stitch North um, um, retreat project. Um, you know what? I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll put a shot right here of the finished item. Um, Hannah of Evertote uh, designed, the, designed the design. And Ellen stitched it using Leo and Roxy um, threads, and I did uh, the finishing. So it was really kind of a group effort. Um, what I did, I brought my little sewing kit, just in case uh, there was any sort of sewing emergency. And uh, I just threw some things in this little um, in-flight amenity kit. And... Um, I, I just threw a few uh, sewing things that I would need. I got my little wrist uh, pin cushion, that, um, some thread, and um, I've got some clips. Um, 
this this I used to I, I glued the the two pieces of the of the ornament together and so I used these to clamp it into place some tape uh, this is some washi tape so it's not permanent uh, I actually use these um, to to mark on my chart and um, I picked up a little portable cutter this is a very clever idea actually you just slip it on any on any um, to, uh, piece of uh, tape and you pull and tear. Uh, this is a linen tester. This uh, is very useful for counting um, uh, linen uh, to determine the count. Oh, and this, this is my new toy. Uh, it's um, a laying tool. I think some people also call it a, a stiletto. This, I, I don't know if it's airplane safe. I would be very careful <laughs> with um, with this checking, um, carrying, using it as having it as a carry on. Oh, and and speaking of carry on, <clears throat> we had someone who joined us at the retreat, and unfortunately, her bags her, or her her luggage that she checked in didn't make it. And uh, you know, fingers crossed, uh, the airline will be able to find it but uh, she had her stitching packed in her check-in bags and um, along with all of her haul. <laughs> so that's actually quite a terrible thing to happen. And, uh, you know, maybe just some takeaway advice uh, from that is to keep anything that's important to you um, as part of your carry-on. So, you know, all of that hard work that you put in your projects, uh, you, you don't want to lose. So, yeah, so so keep it in your carry-on rather than your check-in. Um, <clears throat> the, the, so back to the tool, it's also useful for, for making eyelets. So um, I, I've used it actually in sewing, and which is why it's uh, in here as well. Uh, so, yeah, I, I love this new tool. Uh, spare needles, because you can never have too many. These are my go-to. I, I do love peacemakers. And uh, Bowen is also super. Um, some little binder clips. Before I started using floss drops or those cards that you can organize your floss on, um, I, I preferred these. I can just loop the, the skeins, the strands around it, and uh, it just clips onto the side of my fabric. So yeah, so I like these. And then here's a spare pair of, <laughs> of thread snips. Um, these I, I really like for precision. They're also ambidextrous. So, you know, I'm, I'm left-handed, so, and, and scissors essentially are, are all right-handed, but I like this because of the curved tip and uh, the insane sharpness and the fact that uh, for precision work, I, I can use my left hand. So, magnifiers. Uh, people brought all, all assorted um, paraphernalia, and uh, they had to stand magnifiers, um, clamp magnifiers, portable magnifiers. I, I have my little headset magnifier, and uh, I think you're familiar with these. It comes with a light attached that you can uh, angle and pivot. It's adjustable. It's quite heavy because uh, there are batteries in here, so it, it's quite heavy. And then the lenses, you can uh, swap out and change the magnifying strength. So I, I just packed one with me. I packed a, it's a two and a half. I used these a couple times. Um, a couple others did. Uh, they were they're handy to have. And it's certainly easier to pack this than a big um, stand magnifier. Uh, what did I what did I use uh, to stitch with? I, I had this portable uh, clamp that uh, it, it opens quite wide and can accommodate quite a thick uh, table edge and uh, can do some finer adjustments. And this I liked the way when you're using it, you can access uh, the, the front as well as the back. Uh, just to do any tie-offs or run your threads underneath or fix any knots. So yeah, that this really came in handy. Uh, I'm usually a floor stand stitcher. People brought their <clears throat> all all sorts of frames, all sorts of frames, table frames, lap frames, uh, floor frames, and uh, stands. And 
yeah, it, it seemed anything goes. It's whatever you're comfortable taking. Uh, this, this I liked its uh, size, its portability, uh, the way that it could adjust. And um, the, the great thing about this too, just in case you're asking, is it's, it's wide enough to accommodate a, a Q-snap as well. One of the projects I brought, I had on a Q-snap. So you can um, certainly open this wide enough to accommodate a Q-snap. And what else? I, I talked about my lamp already. And uh, oh, just to show you what's in a typical, well, one of the projects that I packed. Um, again, my, in, my, in my project bag, I have just what I need for that specific project. And uh, this was my, my uh, la di da sweet pea chart. So again, I have, I have, I have my chart. And then I'm stitching this on a hoop. Oh, this was a Stitch North needle minder. Uh, a lot of people joked what, what a cruel trick it was to have a needle, an image of a needle on a needle minder and how it, uh, it really blends in. And so people were grabbing for the, for the fake needle. <laughs> so that, that was funny. So this I, I just I just brought um, with a hoop. I also brought a Q-snap. My my Narnia project was on it. I only stitched on that a little bit, but um, yeah, that's uh, that was uh, what I keep inside. And uh, oh, and then my my ring with the flosses for the project. <clears throat> it was a very Canadian themed <laughs> um, event. Uh, Stitch North, uh, lots of Canadiana. And uh, and this this was uh, gifted to me from um, from Gwyneth, so so that was fun to have. I, I used it, of course, right away. And uh, and that's it. So if you're thinking about going to a retreat, um, please do. You will enjoy every sun, single second of it. Uh, no regrets. And uh, and if you need some help figuring out what to take. I hope this video helped you. Um, I know, yeah, generally I think everything I took, I, I, I was good to go. I was good to go. There wasn't really anything that I, that I forgot to pack. And even if you, even if you do, there were almost 200 stitchers present. So everything worked out great. If you think of anything that's really worked for you at a retreat in the past, then um, please feel free to share. I've got my email listed in the drop down box. So I'd love to hear from you or even just in the comments, uh, just um, feel free to share your favorite thing um, or your best new thing <laughs> that uh, you brought with you to a retreat that you couldn't imagine being without. So yeah, I, I, I'd love to hear um, your experiences as well. So thanks for watching. Good luck with uh, your retreat, uh, if and when you decide to go, and um, happy days.